Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at Bitcoin, the biggest threats to crypto and Bitcoin investors and alt season. I think it's over for now. I'm sure that doesn't come as any surprise or shock to, to you guys that have been in the market for the last several weeks or months, but we need to cancel it. That's my view and I'll show you why in just a moment. So make sure you hit that like button down below, bell notification icon, subscribe to the channel, join me on Twitter and Instagram for daily Q and A's. Let's dive in. What we've been tracking here is the 50% level and you can see how important the 50% level has been as we've been tracking around it for the last three to four days. Slight close under, uh, reasonable close above, a close almost dead on, dead on again and now we're just dropping. So overall, we still don't have a clear signal yet. And this is what we we're talking about over the last few days because it does take some time after a big crash. You need to wait for the dust to settle. However, the crash brings the best opportunities. And like I've mentioned, in terms of consolidating, especially through these periods of the tops and this rundown, getting out of projects which I thought were going to be weaker against Bitcoin. So how I'm testing that is obviously against their Bitcoin pairings, but also the Bitcoin dominance chart. Now we've just seen the biggest run up against the alts in the Bitcoin dominance chart that we have since the breakdown. So we're measuring it against the entire bear market of the Bitcoin dominance chart. So the, the downtrend. And so what I'm looking at here is the low to the high. And we've seen a 17% increase on the Bitcoin dominance, which obviously means money is flowing out of altcoins and either into Bitcoin or into fiat. So that just means that there is more strength coming back to Bitcoin in a time of panic. And so that is one strategy that I've uh, taken on board when it comes to basically protecting my position and protecting my profits, even though I see the overall market, the overall crypto market is going to be long term bull trend. I'm sure you've heard that many, many times before. But in the interim, I want to protect what I have made during the last six months. And so if we look at something like Ethereum, ETH BTC has seen a top in at around 8.2% and we're currently sitting at, call it 6%. And so these lows are starting to get taken out now, take, yeah, taken out, which means there's weakness coming into the market. And I don't want to be holding on to, too, well, I don't mind holding ETH, but in terms of the pattern, uh, I, can, I can afford to sell some ETH into Bitcoin to protect my profits so that I've got more Bitcoin come time of the next altcoin season. So alts, I see them as dropping. And if I want to basically have more ammo next time around for the next alt season, then I need to take what I've got, put it into Bitcoin or into fiat or stable coins, and then wait for the next time uh, to have that opportunity. So since we've seen a big drop in the dollar value of uh, Bitcoin and pretty much the alts, you know, around 40, 50% with some of them. Now, the way I see it is Bitcoin looks like it's stabilizing. Not say it can't go lower, but in terms of its price, where it is, it's not breaking down past its uh, the flash crash low. So if you need a, a bit of an idea of how to gauge strength, just look for the flash crash low. That's on the, uh, the 19th of May. That's for the ETH BTC chart. If we go back on the actual flash crash day, Bitcoin is the 19th as well. Okay, so just make sure you see the flash crash low on whichever chart you're following. And if the market starts to break down beneath that low, it's obviously that it's weaker than other markets. Bitcoin currently is holding up above it. Whereas if I go to something like Sol, Solana, doesn't matter if you're not trading these, just use it as an idea of what's going on. You can see that Solana is broke, ha has broken down past its uh, flash crash low. So this is much weaker. This isn't to say we can't bounce down and come back up. It's We're just using the data that we have in front of us for now to be able to uh, have a better idea of what may come and to make a decision now. So <clears throat> although Solana is something that I love the project, I think there's still going to be great gains in it. I was thinking a Solana summer, a Sol system summer, whatever the hell the old saying was last month. And yes, I was on board with that. I am seeing Solana now begin to break down. It's broken down past its Sol BTC pair and it's into this range. And this was the range that I was accumulating to get a run up. And so this allows me now to protect my profits uh, that I made, or in this case, 
break even on the Bitcoin pairing. And I can use that ammo from Bitcoin when the time comes again. So I'm just seeing this cycle begin again. We know that Bitcoin is first to run, like we see with the, the bull market. So Bitcoin's up first, then comes the majors, the alts, then come some of the other projects which should be working with the majors, say like the layer twos and the DeFi's, those things start to run as well. And then we go through a few other phases like we saw NFTs and it's probably gonna be different the next time round. Then the crazy stuff comes, the Doge coins, the meme coins, the, uh, the Ponzi schemes, and everyone thinks they're all fantastic and they're all gonna make money and everyone's gonna be rich happily ever after. And then we crash. And so we've just gone through one of those cycles. And the point here is, that I see anyway, is to protect those profits and whatever's left of them. In some cases, everyone's lost a, a ton of money, but I still want to play the market in case Bitcoin starts to move again. And I have the Bitcoin rather than just sitting in fiat and hoping the mar all the market goes down further. So this is my way of being wrong, but then also protecting the profits and being right in that sense. So you should know by now as a trader or investor, you can be wrong, you can still make money, but as long as you're there to protect your profits and uh, basically have that capital ready to go again, these are some of the strategies that I employ so that I can continue to be around in the market until we fight another day, until we see the next cycle come through. Another crypto I want to have a look at, which has a similar pattern to this, which I'm finding break down, it's a very popular one, it is Matic. Matic is getting very close. Probably by the time you see this, it'll break down past its uh, flash crash low. This is an important thing. Remember we saw Bitcoin and it's probably going to do it right now while we're on stream with you. Uh, $1.3, we're at $1.4 now and probably hopefully within a few minutes we see it break down through that low and if that happens, probably come back and test this low quite quickly at $0.95 cents. and then if this little swing breaks, of course, our next supports at around that $0.70 or so cents. Now with Matic, this was one of them I just cleared out. I saw this breakdown. This is the, the BTC chart. So I want to be able to, again, protect what BTC I've got. It's broken down. It, it got crushed on its on the 19th. This was on the, um, the flash crash day where it actually ran up pretty hard during the flash crash or just before or just after it. Basically, it's on the same day. It hit a new all time high when the rest of the market was down. I said on that stream, this was the live stream we did on the, the Wednesday night when everything was going crazy. I thought everyone's starting to run into the projects which are at all time highs to try to protect their profits. And this is a major threat to uh, new investors is that they'll try to protect themselves and everything's crashed already. So they've, they've, you've, you've crashed through your profits in ADA or ETH or whatever it is you're holding. And then you look for the next thing that's already up and everyone floods to that thing that's still up. And so you're now starting from a higher position again. So you've dropped and then you take all of those, all that money out, you put into the next one that's already higher and then you drop again. And so even though that you could have stayed in that coin and just lost less, now you're just like compounding your losses. And this is, it's a major problem that um, new people go through. I remember going through this as well. You're like, what can I do next to protect it? If I stick with something that's up or was moving up, maybe I'm going to have a little bit more. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it, it rarely works out like this. And we've just seen Matic get very close. We're at a three now. So three, four, and now it's three, nine. So I suspect that's going to happen again here on Matic. Uh, another one I want to have a look at with you guys is ADA. And ADA USD is at forty. So we're starting to slip again. You can see ADA's quite a long way from its flash crash low on the 19th. So hopefully we continue to consolidate in this zone, the zone that we were in before we took off to that new high. The, the saving grace here is that we're above our BTC highs. So this was the breakout, the BTC. Uh, 13th of May, we broke through those highs. We also had a, another call here of a breakout on the 5th, 6th. If I look at the USD chart, the 5th was the breakout here, and then this was the dollar breakout through here on the 6th. So around a dollar fifty-five, dollar sixty. That broke out all the way to around 245, 246. So in terms of a dollar value, we're pretty much break even. In terms of our BTC value, that's our entry. We're currently here. So we're up on ADA. We're still up about, that's pretty decent. Call it 40%, just give or take a little bit. So I was looking at around 50, say around 40%. And so now I can consolidate and hold some of those profits. Sure, ADA can keep going up further. And maybe that's the low of ADA because it hasn't come anywhere near its uh, flash crash low. So maybe I'm taking profits too early, preempting it, whatever it may be. 
you should know by now that you can't get these things exactly right, but you can take measures to protect profits and then have some dry ammo or dry powder, which is ammo to uh, put into the market next time round. If it happens to be ADA, great. You know, if this thing comes right back, then we're in a good position. I happen to think that's what's going to happen to the altcoins as they start to fall back, as we see with ADA starting to drag, ETH is starting to drag. They're the majors, so ETH BTC. You can see it's at a peak and it's just breaking down from its low. So maybe it comes back a little bit further. It has peaked out at resistance points. So that's a you know another good sign of a price cluster where we would get some resistance. And then that potentially flows back into Bitcoin, which then holds the Bitcoin price up. Maybe it increases a little, maybe it falls a little because money's still flowing out of Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's still able to maintain its dominance over the altcoins because even that more money is flowing out of the alts. These are just sort of some of the scenarios that I would be playing out with uh, with your own plan, or at least hopefully you're doing it prior, because I just basically because you can see the altcoin cycle repeating, or at least again that's my view because that's why you're here. You're on the channel listening to my view. Now another big problem that I see for Bitcoin, or at least the investors in Bitcoin ourselves, is a potential uh, bull trap. So we're heading down. Maybe we find some support here maybe we rise. So we're just playing out scenarios here to, to be prepared. We get a bit of a move up into the uh, old support, which may become resistance around this 44K. Maybe we even test somewhere up around 48 to, to 50K. I think that's possibly a little way off. I might be a little bit uh, greedy on that point, but at least we have these support and resistance levels, which we uh, can potentially see the market come back to. And at least the first one's around so that 42 to 44 area. If that happens, and we get a pullback from there, it's still not over. It's okay. It's not the end of the world just yet. But if we happen to start breaking down past this point, which we recently saw as support, then I would probably start to look at a longer bull market, uh, a longer period of downtime, potentially a bear market, than we were hoping for. But for now, none of this has eventuated. We're still in the mid 30,000s after a big drop on big volume. Looks like we're potentially consolidating here, just playing out some scenarios, looking to protect some of the profits that we've made in our altcoins. Personally, I think altcoins are over now. I think there's all of that fun and excitement has been swept up and it started to flow back into Bitcoin. The main question here now is, will it stay in Bitcoin or will it flow out into fiat? Potentially stable coins, but maybe flow out into some fiat. Either way, the way I'm playing both is protect the profits, put them into Bitcoin, should Bitcoin rise, sweet. We're gonna get some more on the Bitcoin value and the alts probably keep dropping. So that continues to compound our effect later on when alt season comes around again. Now, the last thing I wanted to look at is the timeframes with a potential sideways, bear market, downtrend, whatever it may be. I mentioned it many times before on um, uh, other videos and I'm just measuring timeframes. Basically the low around mid-March to the current peak, which we've hit on the uh, the 14th of April, is around close to 400 days. So that's the first range. And we can call that about 60 odd weeks. So to do that, one week. Now, in terms of a week pricing, we are there to there. So it's about 57 weeks. Half of that gives us about 29 weeks, 28 weeks, something like that. So I'm looking at a halfway point because I use the halfway points when it comes to price. This is just GAN theory. And we're just gonna measure halfway from the April peak. And so that gives us, let's look for 26 weeks at first. 26 brings us all the way into around October. 28, still October. So somewhere early, mid, late October. So October is my next point that I will consider a, a turn. Maybe that's how long it takes to then get to the, the all time high again. Not sure yet, but at least I have a time frame in mind to expect a sideways period or a downtrend that's beneath the all time high. The other option, yes, we could V shape recovery out of this thing, bounce right out of here, get to the new all time high, maybe a little pullback and we go again. That's definitely an option. We've seen that happen on uh, the stock markets after the COVID crash. I happen to think maybe it'll be a little bit different this time. I don't think it's going to be a play out like that because we saw that back in March of 2020, a drop down and then a pretty solid V shape recovery. That's a V right there. 
So maybe it's a little bit slightly different this time. It will rhyme, but I don't think it'll play out exactly the same. So I'm just keeping all of these in mind and play, uh, basically positioning myself the best way I feel is, is the right way now so that I'm ready to go for the next Bitcoin bull run and the next alt season, knowing around that four phases of an alt season and Bitcoin bull market cycle. So that's what I've got for you guys today, looking at the major threats to us as investors. It's getting swept up with a potential bull trap as the market rises up. Everyone gets sort of excited again and then dumps on us. Really pay attention to that over the next few days to few weeks. And then also what I'm doing in terms of altcoin season potentially being over, uh, called short. That's how I'm protecting my profits for this next stage of whatever is to come. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found some value from it. I hope you are making some good gains, or at least protecting those gains from the last six or so months. Don't go anywhere in the bull market. Stick around. These are the times that money is being made. Look at these areas back here. No, like most people weren't in the market when the market was down at these times. So if you have to wait three months or six months to get much, much better entries, play that game. Patience is going to be on your side because you've probably seen by now when it comes to comments and Discord groups and everything else in the crypto space, the majority of people are here to make money within an hour or a day. They do not have patience. So if you can implore some patience, however you see fit, you will do very well. You will do very well with patience in this game. And it doesn't have to be that long. All right, I'll wrap it up there. But essentially, it doesn't even have to be patience like a property market, which you need like seven years or 18 years. This is patience within the months to a few years. It's nothing like the traditional market. So enjoy the ride. I hope you found some value. Hit the like button down below. See you on Twitter and Instagram. Free newsletter, link to that is down below. Drop your email address down there. Once every two weeks, learn about crypto, investing, and property cycles. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.